They were denied their nation's highest honor, but their deeds could not be denied. January 13th, 1998, the White House. For Vernon Baker, it's a day of triumph and emotion. More than 50 years after his battlefield heroics, America finally thanks Baker and six other black soldiers by awarding them the Medal of Honor, long overdue and so greatly deserved. It was a job to do. It was my job. That's what I was there for. In the spring of 1945, Vernon Baker was fighting for his country and his life in the mountainous terrain of northern Italy. He was in his mid-twenties, tough and full of rage toward a country that segregated blacks in the military. Well, my attitude was that I was an angry young black man because I didn't like the way that we were being treated. Baker held the rank of second lieutenant in the all-black 92nd Infantry. White Southerners were, were put in charge of the 92nd. It was the attitude of the U.S. Army that these were the men who were best suited to handle blacks. They did not regard their soldiers very well, did not give them the, the faith and trust they deserved. Reporter Ken Olson wrote a series of stories about the heroics of Vernon Baker, detailing the discrimination Baker and other black soldiers faced during the war. They said uh, many uh, horrible things. They said the black soldier was afraid to, to fight at night, terrified to fight at night. Uh, said that they would fade away and run, that they were unfit for combat, that uh, any officer who dared to lead them was, was crazy. But Vernon Baker would prove them wrong. April 1945, Allied troops found themselves in a tough fight to break through the Germans' Gothic Line. Gothic Line was a 200-mile-long a uh, combination of fortifications, mountainous terrain, and other things that the Germans spent a lot of time building uh, with the idea that someday they might have to do a, a holding action. On the morning of April 5th, Vernon Baker got the order to head a 25-man platoon through the Gothic line and to capture Castle Agnolfi. Castle Agnolfi was important uh, also as uh, part of a, a chain of observation posts that allowed the Germans to uh, sit up in the mountains with their uh, very precise artillery and, and time after time uh, basically annihilate the American troops. The task seemed impossible, but somehow Vernon Baker guided the platoon to within shooting distance of the castle displaying amazing courage along the way. He got those men through a minefield, three miles behind enemy lines unscathed, and then he, all by himself, took out an observation post, three machine gun nests, two bunkers. Despite those heroic actions, Vernon Baker's platoon found itself pinned down by the Germans, taking heavy casualties. That's right, we were stuck, and they knew it, and they cut us to pieces while we were stuck. Machine guns, mortars, artillery, whatever they had, they threw it at us. At this point, the platoon's white commander told a distrustful Baker that he was going to head back for reinforcements. Did you think he would come back? Well, the only thing I could do was wait and see, would see if he was, was telling us the truth. He didn't come back, did he? No, he didn't come back and neither did any reinforcements. 18 of the 25-man platoon were killed, but Vernon Baker didn't give up. He led what was left of his platoon back to safety. The next day, he was ordered to lead a white platoon back to the castle. He got them there without firing a shot, setting up the capture of Castle Ignolfi. So clearly, Vernon Baker and his platoon made it possible for the all-white troops to, to, uh, that came behind them to achieve the success that they did without uh, any harm. After the war, 433 soldiers, all white, were given the Medal of Honor. Vernon Baker was reportedly nominated for the award, but the paperwork mysteriously disappeared. Instead, he received the Distinguished Service Cross, the second highest honor for battlefield valor. In spite of the discrimination, Baker stayed in the Army for 28 years. He felt it was the best place for a black man of his generation to have a career. The only skills I had, I could read and write, and I could uh, operate a typewriter, and I could 
uh, add two and two, but uh, I couldn't get a job because I was black. Come on, Lucky. So on. Vernon Baker couldn't help feeling distrustful. He didn't think America would ever give black heroes the credit they deserved. But when it finally happened, he found a new sense of hope. I hope this helps a lot of young people to see that uh, if you persevere and hang in there, uh, no matter what uh, the odds are against you, you can beat them. He's not a role model with a multi-million dollar football contract. He is um, a man who lives his life humbly and simply and, and yet shows incredible greatness along that way. You got to know that the nation appreciates you. Thank you. No, thank you. Vernon Baker is now 87 years old. He continues to receive honors. Among his most cherished, a street being named after him in his hometown of Cheyenne, Wyoming.